Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video we are going to be doing another unboxing. As you can see this is a rather large one. Uh, this box is particularly large. I think the reason why this box is this large is because of one model in particular. As you know I like to make separate videos about my 1 to 200 models and there should be one 1 to 200 model in this box. And that model you would have seen last week so it's not really going to be much of a surprise when you see this one but we do also have um, a number of various 1 to 400 models in here as well. And honestly without further ado I think we're just going to cut to the chase now and open this box. Just like usual this is from the aircraft model store I highly recommend them. But inside this box we have a number of Gemini Jets models and it's been a while actually since we've done an unboxing of some Gemini Jets models. They've been they've been falling behind lately a little bit. I ordered these models three months ago and considering they're meant to be monthly uh, pre-orders that's kind of two months late. But we move, we've got them now so that's all I really care about. Okay and in total we have seven models in this box which is pretty exciting. Of course we're only really going to be unboxing six of those but let's go ahead and uh, get these models out. Okay, I'm gonna bring these out one at a time. So I'm gonna start with the military one, the largest military one in this box. We have the Gemini Max um, C5, which is the Dover C5. I really like this um, livery thing down here. That looks really, really nice. Of course, as many of you know, I do already have a C5, a San Antonio based C5, but because Dover is um, the nearest C5 base to Washington, I decided to, uh, I decided to get the Dover one. I think I actually said in my unboxing of the San Antonio C5 that I would get a Dover one if it was released. Again, if they do ever bring out a Dover Air Force Base uh, C5, I will probably get that as well. And here we are, about a year later, the Dover C5 is now in my possession. So I'm gonna put that off to the side now and we're gonna get out the other models. We have a couple other military models as well. This is a big kind of military unboxing we have. The second B-1 bomber from Gemini Jets, we have the Ellsworth Air Force Base a B-1B bomber. Again, a really, really cool like livery piece here. That looks really, really good. I love the ones with a lot of color. Looks really, really good. Next up, the final military model, we have the uh, Blue Angels uh, C-130J. That one as well looks really, really good. Again, another C-130 with a lot of color. This will go very well with my a United States Coast Guard C-130. Next up, of course, this one's a must. We have uh, the British Airways 747. This is the new British Airways 747. I'm very excited to see how this one turns out because the current BA 747 that I have is an old mold from Gemini Jets. I believe it was like a 2010 release or something crazy like that. So we have that one. We have <laughs> we have another one because you can never really have too many BA 747s. We then have another 747, but this isn't a British Airways one. We have the Cargalux uh, 747-8 with the mask livery. This is the interactive series uh, model. And then last but not least, we have the, oh, this model I'm so looking forward to. Um, but this is going to be opened in another video. We have the Gemini 200 British Airways Concorde. I can't even fit this all into one shot, but yeah. So by the time you're seeing this, I will already have a video on this model out. Um, I'll leave that link to the end of the video. So if you want to go check this out, um, I would highly recommend you do so. But for now, we're going to open these uh, six 1 to 400 models. I'm just going to move this box out of the way and then we'll get to it. All right, so I think what we're going to do, we're going to start with the civilian aircraft first. We're going to open the British Airways 747s, I think, to start off with. And then we'll move to the Cargo Lux after that. We'll go through the Blue Angels, the C5, and then we'll save the B1 bomber till last. Okay, so I've now repositioned the camera so we have less of that glare. And here we have the British Airways 747. This is Golf. Uh, Charlie India Victor November. This one is the same registration as the one we got in 1 to 200 a little while ago. And now, of course, we have the 1 to 400 version. So here we have the box. Um, it's a very basic Gemini Jets box. So unlike Lufthansa and Air France, uh, British Airways just gets the basic box treatment. To be honest, it suits the British Airways livery. We've got the red, the white, and the blue. So honestly, <laughs> it kind of works. <laughs> and yeah, without further ado, I guess we're going to go ahead and open this box. Okay, so opening the box now. Here we have the cradle of the aircraft. Okay, here we go. We've got the top of the cradle here. Always very difficult to get off. 
we've got the plastic on the top of the model and we have the okay we've got that we've got that slimy issue again uh, from the get-go this is a very very nice model just looking at it from here it's a really really nice model uh, I'm gonna put this off to the side now I'm gonna open the second one and uh, then we'll get to reviewing this aircraft and here we have the second model also in perfect condition and with the addition of these two 747s, I now have a whopping 12 British Airways 747-400s. Granted, they're not all in the regular liveries. I have three in the regular livery, including these two. I have one in the One World livery. I have the three retro liveries, and then I have four of the Project Utopia liveries. So it's pretty insane. I don't plan on stopping here. Um, I would like to get some more of these to eventually kind of do some sort of Heathrow mock-up. I don't think I could get around to doing the entirety of Heathrow, but we'll have to see. So here we have one of the models. I'm not gonna review both of them just because they're the exact same model. Neither of them have defects, so I'm just gonna review one of them. Okay, so here we go. This is Golf Charlie India Victor November. This one is currently being stored at the Cotswold Airport. This was delivered to British Airways in, I believe, September 1997, I believe. I might be wrong on the month, um, but I definitely know this one was ordered in 1997. A lot of the 747s uh, came in that year. I think that was the peak year for British Airways receiving their 747s. This one, however, this one is currently 24 years old. And again, as I said, it's being stored at the Cotswold Airport. I believe I got a photo of it. I'm not sure. I'll have on the screen if I did get a photo of this aircraft. Um, and that'll be on the screen now. But as you can see at the front here, this is the regular um, Chatham Dockyard livery, um, except we don't have the crown emblem. So some of the British Show 747s, um, even as of late of 2020, uh, some of them still didn't have the crown emblem. But starting off at the front here, you can see we've got the nose of the aircraft here. Uh, up here, we've got the first class cabins, of course. Uh, these ones have the fading glass windows, which is pretty cool. We have, of course, the cockpit up here with the business class cabins up the top here. We have that Chatham Dockyard check there with the British Airways titles along with the kind of second business class cabin down here. We then have the forward landing gear here which is the later edition of the 747 uh, gear by Gemini Jets. This gear I think I prefer the one that was released around 2014 2015 but this one isn't bad. Then moving back on the aircraft here we have the middle of the aircraft we have of course these are the premium economy cabins here we've then got the wing of the aircraft the landing lights up there the engines the Rolls-Royce um, engines here we have the economy cabins back here with the registration of the aircraft the Royal Mail logo there with the we have the rear door of the aircraft we then have the tail which um, just by looking at it this seems to be a much more vibrant red to the uh, the uh, older British Airways 747 in fact you know what? I'm gonna go and grab my older edition British Airways 747 okay yes yeah, so on the right here as I bring it into the frame we have the older edition British Airways 747 and you can probably see on the camera uh, the, the left hand side is the newer one the right hand side is the older one so you can see that the red on this aircraft here is a lot darker and this one's a lot lighter now that may just be due to sun exposure of course when you leave your models out in the sun for too long they do tend to go a little bit lighter in color which is why it's always best to kind of keep your models in a shaded place otherwise the color will deteriorate over time but yeah that's just really interesting to note and with that that does kind of conclude the British Airways 747 I will take a glance at the uh, landing gear real quick as you can see the landing gear on the bottom here we do have the suspension kind of landing gear in the middle here and yeah that does conclude this model it's a really really nice model if you don't have a BA 747 in your fleet I would highly recommend uh, you get one of these they are amazing aircraft they're just a really nice mold in general and with that I do want to cut to a little Chinook intermission okay we do have over there we do have a Chinook currently hovering and there he seems to be departing straight towards us there and there he goes off to who knows where I don't know where they go from here they kind of head towards the ships down in Portsmouth so I have no idea where he's going there's Portsmouth in the distance that's where um, the HMS Queen Elizabeth and the HMS Prince of Wales are based and there goes the Chinook off into the distance
Okay, and next up we have the Gemini Jets interactive series, Boeing 747-8. This is the Cargo Lux 747-8, but this is in the mask livery. As many of you know, I've made it a thing now that I'm going to try and get every single interactive series, 1 to 400 plane that Gemini Jets release. They seem to release one of these every like other month, and so it's really cool to see which ones they're going to release next. This box, again, it's really, really simple. It's the regular Gemini Jets box. I'm um, just like BA, we've got the red, white, and the blue, and then we've got the clip art of the aircraft here. We've got the little interactive series logo here. Boeing 747-8F, Cargo Lux down there. On the back of the box, we've got, of course, the same propaganda. We've got the clip art of the aircraft. Um, interesting that it's not climbing on the back of here. It's got the open configuration, which is quite interesting. As real as it gets, again, all of that, blah, blah, blah. And with that, we're gonna go ahead now and open the box. As you can see, inside the cradle, we've got all of the little pieces dotted around here that kind of form the, the doors in either the opened or closed configurations. And by taking the plastic off the top of the box here, we can now take out the model. Now these ones, um, these are a little bit more secured inside the box. So there's these little dimples on the back here. I don't know if you can see that. These two dimples here kind of secure the plane into this box. So this one's a little bit more difficult to get out of the box. You've just got to kind of force it at the back here. There we go, it's out. And we can take the plane out of the box. And here we have the model. This is the regular Cargo Lux 747-8. The only difference is, is we've got the mask livery at the front here. I believe this livery is titled Not Without My Mask. It's meant to encourage people to uh, wear their masks. And as you can see, the front of the aircraft has this mask kind of decal uh, painted onto the front of the aircraft. I don't know about you guys, but I personally prefer to have my um, interactive series aircraft kind of displayed in their open configurations. And we can very carefully put in all of the pieces. And then actually here, just to compare them, I do have my regular Cargo Lux 747-8 here as well. I'm pretty much, you know, this is like Luxembourg here. So as you can see, like the liveries are pretty much identical. It's just the very front of the aircraft, which is different. As you can see at the front of the aircraft here, we've got the, uh, the blue of the mask at the front here. We've got these straps kind of um, hanging around the C of the Cargo Lux logo back here. Then down here, we've got in red and blue, the uh, name of the livery, which is not without my mask. Then up here, we've got the cockpit windows here. We've got the EU flag here on the back there. We've got the three uh, windows on the top deck of the 747-8, uh, the uh, front landing gear here, and then moving to the middle of the aircraft. We have the engines of the 747-8. We've got the uh, red and blue stripe of the Cargo Lux logo kind of going to the back of the aircraft. We then have the cargo door here, which I actually find I've got to sand the cargo door a little bit. I don't know if you can see that there, but like like this piece here, it doesn't slide all the way in, so I just have to sand the underside of the cargo door and then it just slides all the way in. That seems to be a common occurrence with these uh, interactive series aircraft. I don't think there is a single interactive series aircraft where I haven't had to do that to. And then finally here at the rear of the aircraft, we have um, this thing here, which I believe says Boeing 747-8, the registration of the aircraft here, which is Lima X-Ray, uh, Victor, Charlie, I hope I believe that's a C, I can't really see that, uh, Foxtrot. And then of course we have the Cargo Lux logo on the tail here with the APU at the back. Again, it's a really, really nice model. Um, I don't have a huge amount of beef with the interactive series molds. I do have some issues, of course, like the uh, doors not going in, but honestly, I'm I'm pretty surprised with how sturdy these doors kind of fix into there. Even this bit, although how kind of like light you have to kind of push that in for it to stay, it stays in there pretty well. So I'm pretty impressed with how sturdy this model is despite being kind of a delicate model. But there we go. It's a really, really nice model, and I think with that, we're going to move on to our next model, which is the Blue Angel C-130. Okay, so here we go. This is the Gemini Max uh, Blue Angel C-130. This is the C-130J variant. I do apologize about the glare on the front of the box, but you can kind of get the picture anyway. We've got, of course, this metal pattern in the back, which is the same with every uh, Gemini Max model. We've then got the clip art of the aircraft on the front here. We have the uh, yellow and blue stripes under here with the Blue Angels kind of like logo down there. Down here, we have the name of the aircraft, the Lockheed C-130J. And then on the rear of the aircraft, it's the exact same propaganda from Gemini Jets that we usually get. The aircraft climbing as real as it gets, all the little facts and details 
details and there we go. And before I get into the rest of this model, um, I think we're going to have a second Chinook intermission as I hear one coming back in. I don't know if this is the same Chinook coming back in, uh, there's a very short kind of flight. As you can see here, it's taken another landing back into the uh, helipad. And there we go, with that we can move back onto model. I think I'm just gonna open this now. Of course, I love the C-130. It's probably one of my favorite planes. And I love some of the liveries that have been put on this, of course. Um, there are a lot of military aircraft and a lot of them are just in plain gray basic liveries. So it's really cool to see, you know, various aircraft be painted, various military aircraft, I should say, being painted into these special liveries like the United States Coast Guard livery. And to be honest, just a lot of these like really cool camo liveries look really cool as well. Like of course the Royal Netherlands Air Force uh, C-130 that I have, that's another really, really nice one. Here we go, here is the model and we have a little bit of an issue with the props I see. As you can see, the props on this aircraft, they're all kind of bent back. Now the props, I've had this problem before. I had this with, in fact, my United States Coast Guard C-130. Uh, it should be a really easy fix. Uh, you just bend them back into place. Uh, the issue would come if one of these was to break. I don't think I could fix this if one of these props broke off. They're so tiny, I think it just wouldn't even be worth it, but these should just be able to bend back into place. I'll try and fix those props later, but for the most part, this looks like a really, really nice model. Still Starting off at the front of the aircraft here, we have the C-130 nose. We've got the cockpit with the eyebrows at the top there. We've got the uh, yellow at the front here of the aircraft. Then got the landing gear, which is a non-rolling landing gear, I believe. Moving back, we have the blue kind of main fuselage piece and the white on the top. We have the those yellow lines kind of going back on the aircraft here with the Blue Angels title at the top here. Something that's quite interesting is you can see that there aren't just four blades on each prop. There are in fact six, which is actually really unique. I'm, I believe all of my C-130s so far just have four kind of blades. You can see here on the wing of the aircraft, we have the United States Air Force logo there with a yellow tip on the end of the wing there. And then here at the rear of the aircraft, we've got, of course, the uh, the emblem of the US Air Force again. And then at the rear, we've got, of course, the tail. Uh, we've got the yellow tips at each tip, and then we've got the, I believe there's some kind of like emblem of the Blue Angels, maybe, I'm not really sure. But there we go, it's a really, really nice model. I will, I'll probably be able to fix those props. And overall, it looks like a really, really nice model, and it's just gonna add a really nice addition to my military collection. The other little thing I do wanna add before I move on is I believe the doors at the back are supposed to open. I tried to force it open but that is as far as I could get it to open so far. I was trying to see on working on that. I'm not really sure. I think they should make it a bit more clear if they are supposed to open or not because I don't want to force that open and for it to break. It's the same with the A400Ms as well. The mold makes it look like you are supposed to open them with these little divots on the side here but um, I'll see if I can open this anyway. Next here moving on to the biggest of them all we have the Gemini Max uh, Dover Air Force Base C5 Super Galaxy here. Sorry for the glare in the camera there. I'll try and put it to the side there so you can actually see the box. So here we've got the clip out of the aircraft. Of course, it is just a plain basic gray aircraft, but we've got, of course, this emblem here at the back of the aircraft on the tail there. We then, of course, have down here the Lockheed C5M Super Galaxy. We have the Dover Air Force kind of emblem down there. At the back of the aircraft, of course, we've got the same as every other box, as well as it gets propaganda uh, clip out of the aircraft kind of in a climb. But with that, I think we're just going to go ahead now and open the model. These are um, these are quite similar in size to the Antonov 124s, except these ones actually have good molds. As you can see, the C5 does share a lot of similarities with the um, Antonov 124. We've got the same kind of nose shape here. Got, of course, the two wheels at the front, the um, over fuselage wings here with the two engines. It's just very, very similar. Starting off at the front of the aircraft here, here we have the door, which opens up that way. Very similar to, again, the Antonov 124 and the 747-8 we just saw. Be very interesting to see if we could get an interactive series of the C5. That'd be very, very interesting. Above there, of course, we've got the cockpit windows here. We've got the US Air Force logo kind of titles there. Got the boarding door here. Under that, of course, we've got the uh, forward landing gear, which consists of two sets of wheels. Moving further back on the aircraft here, as you can see, we've got the uh, engines of the aircraft. On the underside of the aircraft here, we have the uh, wheels as you can see. The C5 has a very interesting set 
of like a main landing gear here. We've got like four sets of three sets of landing gear here. It's a very interesting system they have back here. And I believe when these kind of retract, they kind of tilt sideways and then go in. So that's really, really interesting to see. On the underside of the wing here, we've got the USAF, which stands for United States Air Force. At the rear of the aircraft, uh, we have the markings for the uh, door at the back here, but these definitely don't open. These are just printed on the back of the aircraft. It's quite a shame because with a model this size, you would think that they could get a door that could open. But there we go. Moving to the rear of the aircraft now, we have the uh, tail at the back here, which consists of the uh, United States um, flag there. We've got the Dover emblem down there and some numbers and little details back there as well. Here again, we've got the United States uh, Air Force logo back here. And then we've got, of course, the uh, T-tail at the back here. This is probably one of the biggest T-tails in the world. But there, as you can see, we've got that massive T-tail at the back. Overall, it looks like a really, really nice model and I can't wait to add this to my collection. And with that, we're gonna move on to the final model of this unboxing, which is the Ellsworth B1B uh, Bomber. And then finally here for the unboxing, as I said, we have the Ellsworth Air Force Base B1B Rockwell Bomber. This is the second B1B that um, GMLI Jets have released. We got the Dias Air Force Base uh, B1 in, I believe, either 2018 or 2019. It's been a massive gap between that one and the release of this one, which is pretty interesting. What's quite interesting to me is we've had the B1, but then Gemini Jets hasn't really expanded on the bomber line. We haven't had any B-52s, any B-2s, um, any of the Russian bombers, which would be pretty cool as well. And so, yeah, it's pretty weird to me that... Um, we've had kind of a lack of bomber aircraft. I mean, they've shown interest, of course, with releasing this one and of course the um, Dias Air Force one in the past, but for some reason we just haven't had an extension of this line of aircraft. But as you can see, the box is just the same. It's pretty much the same as any Gemini Max box. We've got the Ellsworth stripe here. Every Air Force base kind of has their own unique stripe, just like the Dover C5 had this stripe down here. The Ellsworth stripe is this one on the box here, and you can see it's replicated onto the tail of the aircraft there to just kind of distinguish where this aircraft comes from. But with that, I think we're gonna go ahead now and open the model. Here we have the, the B1B, man, that looks so good. This is one of the only planes Gemini Jets has ever made with kind of tilting wings. It's very, very interesting, the mechanics they have behind this, but yeah, here we have the model. It looks really, really good, and it's such a unique little model. I would highly recommend any of you to get this if you don't have one of these. So the main feature here is, of course, the wings. They do extend out this way, and when you extend one, the other one also comes out. With the wings out like this, this is the takeoff configuration, of course, with the wheels down you would only really see the wings like this. Of course, with the wings out, they can then add flaps, which of course increases lift. Um, but of course, the wings do also go back. You would only really see this in flight. The B1s can exceed the speed of sound. Uh, the B1A initially was faster, uh, but that was canceled uh, by the Carter administration, I believe. And then the B1B was put into production. This version is a lot slower than the B1A. However, it can still break the speed of sound. Um, I be don't believe this can reach Mach 2, but I believe the B1A can reach Mach 2. Um, again, I might get some of this information wrong. I don't know a ton about military aircraft, but to my knowledge, that's the case. Only four B1As were built and then 100 B1Bs were built. And actually the first B1B was retired just a couple weeks ago. The US Air Force are starting to slowly fade these out. And I mean slowly. Um, I mean slowly because the last one of these will be retired in 20 36 so we've still got a very very long time with these in the skies but that 100 is starting to dwindle it's going to go down to 98 97 99 and of course eventually we'll just have the last one operating but with that being said we can now go take a look at this model of course starting off at the front here we've got this very dark gray nose piece here i believe this is where the radar is stored if i'm not correct so that's why it's a darker gray at the nose here then moving back of course here we have the cockpit of the aircraft i believe the cockpit piece can actually come off yeah just like that you can see inside the cockpit here this is a really really nice little detail you can see inside there we have even the little seats inside there which is really really cool i don't understand why we needed that piece to come off i remember on my first b1 my uh, dias b1 i lost that piece for a very long time and i only just found it like a month later so it's a bit of an annoying piece that it's not actually fixed down then here of course we've got the uh, forward landing gear of course the landing gear on most military aircraft 
Minecraft is this white color. I'm not exactly sure why it's white. If anybody does know, this is the same on, of course, the C5. Um, a lot of the military aircraft just has like white gear, which is really weird. Again, I'm not sure why. If any of you do know, let me know. And then here at the uh, middle of the aircraft here, as you can see, we've got the wings and those engines. On the underside here, where the bomb doors, I believe those are the bomb doors there with the uh, main landing gear here. Uh, so these don't drop nuclear bombs. Um, these are non-nuclear bombers, which is, I believe, another change from the B1A. I believe the B1A was a nuclear bomber. This one isn't a nuclear bomber. And then, of course, at the rear, you can see there's another look at those engines. A really nice color they have on those engines back there. And then here, of course, at the very rear of the aircraft, we've got the tail of the aircraft. Here we've got EL, which I presume stands for Ellsworth. And then, of course, we've got the Ellsworth stripe we were talking about back there. Again, just like all the other military aircraft, this is a very, very nice model and it's going to make a great addition to my collection. But just like that, that does conclude this unboxing of all of these aircraft, all really, really nice models. The only kind of default we've had is the props on the C-130. But honestly, Gemini Jets are really stepping up their game with damages. It's kind of rare now to get a broken Gemini Jets model, which is pretty interesting. I don't know whether this could, of course, be a coincidence that we're just not getting any broken models, or they could actually be stepping up their game in some way, shape, or form. All in all, really, really nice models. The 747s are very nice. C5, that's just an old but great mold right there. We've got, of course, this mold, very nice. C130, the mold is great, the props just a little bit weak. And then, of course, we have the amazing B1, and I'm really hoping that Gemini Jets start producing some other bombers, like the B52, uh, the B2 would be really cool, some Russian ones as well, like the TU160, the Bear, the Vulcan would be really, really cool to see. So, yeah, a lot of options for Gemini Jets to go. Um, I'm hoping they do go quite far down this 1 to 400 military kind of hole. There's so many models I would love to see, but apart from that, I want to thank you very much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.